Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at operating systems and initially, just for this short video, we're going to understand the purpose of an operating system. To do that, we need to describe the purpose of an operating system. Now, this is a very, very, very simple question that will come up in the exam, um, which can sometimes be four marks. It could potentially be eight marks and you'll see there's lots of different points. The way I'd suggest you remember this is think about your own personal operating system at home. But there are some slight differences that you have to be careful of. <coughs> I seem to be sneezing a lot in these videos. Sorry about that. Right. So let's have a look at this purpose. Operating systems are a set of programs that are designed to run in the background on a computer system. OK, it's a type of system software is an operating system. So that is a, a simple definition. Operating systems are a set of programs designed to run in the background on a computer system. All right. So that would be a one marker if you had one. If you had a two mark question, you might add one of these other things in here. Uh, the OS controls the operations of the hardware and resources management. It controls the data flow around the system. It controls the storage devices, fetches data that the computer can use, and then controls where the data goes once used, whether it is stored or displayed on an output device, i.e. that is where it goes. So uh, the operating system controls all the hardware and manages all the resources within the computer, um, as it's just said there. So we're looking at data flow, storage devices, fetches data, and then puts it either on screen or um, store it back into a storage device. All right, so that's the first point. Second point, it has a computer, human computer interface, a user interface that lets the user control the operating system and therefore the computer hardware. So we've got a user interface. This should be obvious. It provides a platform for applications to run and deals with issues that the software may have, e.g. storage of files. So when you're running uh, applications, and it wants to store a file, it will then provide the method for you to be able to save that file in the place that it's going to save. So it will store the file in the correct place for you. Handles communications using rules protocols to govern communication. So it'll handle um, how things communicate with each other in the system. It handles translation of code. So compilers and interpreters. Uh, you should know this from when you're doing programming. Um, it'll handle translation of code automatically. So all these programs are made using uh, some sort of high level language and it will automatically compile these so that it runs the code in the binary. Um, it has utility programs that help to keep the computer running efficiently, e.g. security software, cleanup tools or formatting. And the last point here I've put in, but generally I don't think you should uh, use it. Because not all operating systems, as we'll see, will do this. It depends whether this is a multi-user system or whether it's a single-user system. Obviously, a single-user system will not use passwords um, for files um, or for users. Okay, So it depends on the question. If it talks about a multi-user, you might be able to put that in. But generally, I would not think about putting that in. I would think about the ones above. Now, if we have a quick look at an operating system here. Get rid of some of these. See my bad music collection there. No, I don't want you to go big. Right, get rid of these so we've got a bit of space. Okay, uh, where were we? I don't want you full screen. I want you in the window. And I want to see all of this. Okay, there we go. Right, so operations control. Operating system control the operations of the hardware and resource management. Controls the data flow around the system, controls storage devices, fetches data that the computer can use, and then controls where the data goes once used, i.e. whether it is stored or displayed on an output device. So we should know that right now anyway. We know that this is controlling the hardware. I've got a mouse that I'm controlling here, and the operating system is allowing that to display on the screen. I can't point to it. I'm pointing to it with my finger at the moment, but you can't see that. But the operating system's controlling where the mouse goes. If I type something in, the operating system's controlling the fact that I'm typing something in and it's going into the address bar here on this. Um, so the operating system's controlling the hardware there. If I save something, or if I go to files and I load something, the operating system will load, help load whatever it is that needs loading, in this case a Word document. If I save this, the operating system will store it in the correct place. 
So in this case, it's output the information to the screen initially. And then if I store it, it will store it in the right place. Um, so this is all this bit here. So that's how we look when we're looking at Windows. It gives you an example of how Windows might do it. it has a com human computer interface that lets users control the OS and therefore the computer hardware. Well, look at what we've got here. We've got a graphical user interface. We've got Windows. Here's a window. We've got icons. Here are the icons. We've got menus. And we've got pointer. All right, so we've got a graphical user interface that we're going to look at in a little bit more detail later. But what else have we got? Let's use control the OS and therefore the computer hardware. I can control this operating system, therefore I can control the computer hardware because if I am opening things, things are going into the memory. If I am closing things, things are getting removed from memory. Okay, the RAM. If I am storing things or saving things, things are going into the storage device. If I'm opening things, things are loading from the storage device. Um, things are getting output to the monitor when I move my mouse it's becoming uh, it's moving on the monitor so things are getting output as I click things I'm putting information in so the operating system is controlling that and the human co computer interface lets me control the operating system right provides a platform for applications to run and deals with issues that software may have we've already had a little look at this without realizing it but I can open a program so let's go to where's Microsoft Office there it is so I can open all these different programs or applications. So I'm going to open PowerPoint. I'm going to create a blank presentation. Go away. Let's go to new because I made a mistake there. Blank presentation. Hello world. I can now save this presentation. The operating system will control where it gets saved to. So I'm just going to stick it into downloads because it's temporary. And now that's saved in downloads, the operating system controlled where that was saved. It will also control where it's stored on the hard drive. So it controls it in the actual physical storage of the hard drive as well. So that's there where we've got provides a platform for applications to run. We just run a program and deals with issues that software may have, stored files. I saved it using the software, but the operating system will store it physically on the hard drive for us. Okay, handles communications using rules, protocols to govern communication. So what communication do we mean? Well, we, we mean the communication, again, with the, the hardware inside. Also communication with the user. I'm moving my mouse again here. So that is me communicating by moving my mouse across the mouse pad. Now, every time I move my mouse, my finger to the right the operating system needs to know to move the mouse to the right so there has to be some sort of rule or protocol that says if my finger moves across that pad x amount of distance then the mouse will move x amount of distance on the screen there'll be rules going um, through that the same will happen between the communication between the memory and the storage devices there will be rules to d dictate how the data from storage devices will go into the RAM or the memory and the operating system will control that as well. So it can handles all the communication using rules or what we also call our protocols to govern the communication. Right. Handle translation of code easy compiler interpreter. Well every time I open this program it is going to be made in some sort of coding or scripting language uh, programming language sorry not scripting language some sort of programming language. Now as we know computers deal in ones and zeros so the operating system needs to convert whatever language these have been created in into the ones and zeros so it will handle that using either compiler or interpreter um, again think think to see when you're doing c sharp in f452 and that will help you remember that hopefully it has utility programs that help compete can, blah, 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 has utility programs that help to keep the computer running efficiently eg security software cleanup tools or formatting so if i go into windows into control panel we should see let's see um, can I get into the... all right uh, find and fix problems where was that I don't like the new control panel it's annoying there we go there's some here um, create and format hard disk partitions free up disk space so if you look at free up disk space If we go to defragment instead, defragmentus, oh, there's free up this space. So we've got defragmentor and we've got this cleanup here. Both are two types of utility that help clean up the disk. 
um, so remove temporary files or organize the disk so all the files are close together on the disk to improve efficiency so ooh, cancel that cancel that close that so we've got different types of utility um, uh, which we've got there cleanup tools is the example I've just shown you we've also got security software um, that can be used on operating systems and formatting so we can actually format different drives all right so that would be the way I try to remember it is think about your computer system at home if I was you now I would get a PowerPoint go on your computer system at home put these as titles and take screenshots for examples so put this specific information down as a title and take a screenshot put this down as a title take a screenshot and do it off your computer at home so it helps you remember these different things it doesn't matter if your screenshot is not a hundred percent correct as long as it helps you remember each of these points it will make life a lot easier for you so that is the purpose of operating systems in the next video we'll go on to look at the different types of operating system which gets a lot more complicated um, these are all the points that could come up in the exam as I said this last one generally if it's just talking about operating systems in general don't use it if it's talking about a multi-user system and asked for the purpose of of um, multi-user system you might be able to put that in if it if it's got that description in but generally I would leave this out and go with these top ones for exam questions just to be sure if you're not able to remember enough for the exam then you could put one more in which is this one if, if you find it easy to remember hope that helps um, and I'll see you in the next video.